Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh well, who cares about this boring explanation? Let's get on with it already! I don't mind starting the trial, but I don't really have a grasp of how the case played out. You know, because I was asleep the whole time. <laughs> Even if you do grasp it, you're just gonna confuse the heck out of us, aren't you? But Nagito's not alone. I don't really get it either. You're fine. Mm. Your head's empty anyway. <laughs> empty head? Huh. What's wrong with that? Listen up! The emptier your head, the more dreams you can stuff inside it, you know? Anyway, we shouldn't proceed with the trial if those two can't participate in the arguments. Since he's the first witness, why don't we ask Hajime to explain the incident and the sequence of events? Then, let's start with when we split into the hospital team and motel team because of the despair disease. The hospital team consisted of Nagito, Ibuki, and Akane, who were oh. infected, and Mikan, They're both Yuhiko, next to me, and they both dead. The other five they in the motel died. team were myself, Gundam, Kazuichi, Chiaki, and Hyoko. Spending the night at the hospital was prohibited, so Hajime and I had to sleep at our cottages. I woke up at my cottage on the day the incident happened. Mikan came by to wake me up and told me that Nagito had recovered from his symptoms. We immediately headed over to the hospital, and after we confirmed his recovery, I made Mikan rest in the on-call room, since she hadn't slept all night, while I waited in the hospital lobby. And then, I saw the incoming signal light on the surveillance camera blinking before our scheduled time. When I pressed the button to turn on the monitor, what appeared on screen was... A video of someone wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head, climbing a stepladder. Amazing! That's such a heart-pounding story! And then what did you do, Hajime? I, I tried to stop them, of course. I rushed out of the hospital and ran to where the video was being recorded, the music venue. But it was too late. By the time I arrived, the person wearing the hemp bag on their head was already hanging from the ceiling. I thought I should tell the others right away, so I headed to the motel. Why the motel? Because it was close to the music venue, and unlike the hospital, there were more able-bodied people there. At least, that's what I thought. The only person who came with me was Chiaki. But I remember feeling a little relieved because not long after, we met up with Mikan and Fuyuhiko. We were also looking for Ibuki since she disappeared from our sight. After I rested for a bit, I started counting everyone at the hospital. And then I noticed Ibuki was gone, so I, I sprinted out of the hospital. Coincidentally, I ran into Fuyuhiko, so I pled with him in various ways to see if he could help me out. Various ways? Don't say it like that and confuse people. After I heard from those two that Ibuki disappeared, I had a feeling she was the person wearing the hemp bag. So I immediately led them to the music venue. But the door wouldn't open. Since we had no other option, the four of us broke down the door. And when that happened, we didn't just find Ibuki's body. We also found Hiyoko's. And not just that. Her body was taped to a pillar. That's when we heard the body discovery announcement. Not once, but twice in a row. And so, we decided to lower the hanged body, didn't we? When we removed the hemp bag, 
just as we feared. It was Ibuki. So that's how the case played out. Thank you. I understood it very easily. Well, it's clear what the problem with this case is. When Hajime left the music venue, who... Wait, how do I know anything Hajime just said is true? Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm only being impartial right now. And the story I just heard is clearly suspicious. Hajime, if you're the only one who saw the hanging video and the first one to discover Ibuki's body, then you could be lying as much as you want right now, right? Lie? Why would I lie? Obviously. So you could make us ignore what might be an inconvenient truth for you. Do you doubt me? If you're not lying, I would like you to prove it. Come on, try to prove it to me. Prove you're not the killer. It's, such, it's just as Kazuchi said. Nagito's the kind of guy who would just confuse us and make things worse. I should have explained it to. I shouldn't have explained it to Nagito. I'm in trouble now thanks to that. I gotta remember the controls again. Oh gosh. I think it's the uh, probably the unit that was destroyed. He's clearly suspicious. Oh whoops. And the fact that Ibuki hung herself. That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie means it probably is Hajime's fault. I haven't seen the movie. I'm not the killer. There should be a contradiction somewhere. I haven't Hajime's seen the movie, so clearly it also showed the date of my ticket. So he's just helping me out. Okay. No, that's wrong. I'm not the killer. I mean, there's no way I'd be able to imitate that movie. Of course you're not. I already knew that. Huh? Before the incident, Hajime had never watched that movie. His invitation ticket is proof of that. He told me to keep it. <laughs> Each person only received one ticket, and they're marked with a stamp that shows the date and time. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Yes, no mistakes there. Which means there's no way Hajime, who never saw the movie, could commit murders that imitated it. Or... Did anyone tell him what happens in the movie? Of course no one did, right? Hold on a sec! You're the one who brought this up in the first place! Nagito, what are you doing? Well, since we're opening with your witness testimony, I thought we should solidify the foundation. It also provides a good warm-up. Oh, what wow. warm-up? This isn't a game, you know. <laughs> Don't get mad. I just think warming up is really important, especially since this isn't a game. What a waste of time. Well, I knew it would turn out like this anyway. Now then, since we know Hajime's testimony is reliable, let us move on to the arguments. So this means Ibuki definitely climbed the stepladder all by herself, right? Yeah, I'm positive. Then that seals it! Ibuki committed suicide! If Ibuki committed suicide, then who killed Hiyoko? Hmm, a murder coincidentally occurring in the same place as a suicide... ain't possible, huh? Like I said before, it's pretty clear what the problem with this case is. The killer murdered Hiyoko while Hajime was gone. So all we gotta do is establish who could have possibly done that. Then let's ask Hajime, how long would you say you were away from the music venue? I couldn't have been gone for more than 10 minutes. So they killed Hyoko and taped her up within 10 minutes? There's no way that's possible. 
That's why the killer stalled for time by making the music venue a closed room. Hmm? What do you mean a closed room? The killer blocked the venue door from the inside to try and keep us from entering right away. However, that door is the only entrance to the music venue, right? If they blocked the door from the inside, the killer would not have been able to leave either. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Which means, when we broke down the venue door, the killer was still inside. <gasps> they were? If that's the case, the only suspicious people are those who don't have an alibi for that time. And that's you two! Sonia and Kazuichi! Kazuichi? Me too? Oops. What the hell? Why's it gotta be us? The others all have alibis. Chiaki, Mikan, Hajime, and I all broke down the venue door together. Gundam met up with Hajime at the motel right before that. And if Akane and Nagito were laid up in the hospital, the only person that leaves is one of you. There's another person who doesn't have an alibi. You know, Nekomaru. Me too! Hey, why are you talking like... Huh? <laughs> You're kidding, right? You're not up to something weird, are you? Please stop making bad jokes. Anyway, if the killer was hiding inside the venue, we should obviously doubt the people who don't have alibis. What a wicked way of backing us into a wall. Is this his professional skill? The killer was inside the music venue. Fuyuhiko obviously thinks so. Obviously thinks so. Is that really it? Hotel room key. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. The killer was still inside the music venue. Okay. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? That door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they look like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. That person's remark contradicts the truth. I should be able to prove that with my evidence. Like, what if they use that glob to lock it from the outside? The killer was still inside by locking the door. No, that's wrong. I have no idea what the glob was for, but. <laughs> There's also a possibility that the door was locked from the outside. I was like, I agree with everything from they're the saying. Outside. How? But then there's that there's glob thing. transparent glob stuck to the venue door. Maybe that's what they used. Semi-transparent glob. Like, rubber maybe? It wasn't rubber at all. That transparent glob was probably... I mean, it has to be glue. I see! That semi-transparent glob must have been glue. Glue? Yeah, I think so too. It had a firm, gel-like chewiness. And chewiness. I could smell workshop chemicals the moment I put it in my mouth. Oh, right. Based on all that, I'm certain it was glue. I didn't know glue was edible! I believe it is not something one typically eats. That glue was only applied to the areas where both doors touched. By pouring it in the gaps of the closed door, they must have sealed the venue door from the outside. And thanks to that, a glob of glue was left where the door was stuck. Yep, it fits perfectly. But if you just stick them together with glue, you'd be able to break down the door easily, you know? That doesn't really matter. The killer only did that to make us think the door was locked from the inside. 
What'd you say? First of all, oh. didn't that drumstick we found seem really obvious? Almost unnaturally so? Oh, darn. Wow, okay. It was so obvious that it makes more sense to think the killer placed it as a diversion. Sure. Are you saying the drumstick was a trap the killer set on purpose? Dang, man. Then I... I totally fell for that fucking trap. Apologize to Miss Sonia and me. However, you're not allowed to slice open your stomach this time. <laughs> In a quarrel, both sides are to blame. That's why it's better to just have no sides at all. So, during the 10 minutes Hajime left the venue, the killer murdered Hiyoko and created a closed space? And they also taped her up after killing her, right? Even quick work has limits. Oh, what unimaginable speed for a slow poke like me. If they couldn't have done it while Hajime was away from the venue, they must have done it earlier than that. I thought I think so too. But when Hajime got to the venue, only Ibuki's body was there, right? And when you went back with everyone else, Kyoko's body was there too, right? But it's possible that the body was just revealed at that time, when Hyoko was actually killed earlier. Just revealed? Of course, the body wasn't revealed on its own. The killer did that too. Here, I have proof. Hmm, that scrap of paper. Is that what we found in the baton lighting at the music venue? That's right, but... Just what is this scrap, anyway? That scrap that was stuck on the baton lining in the music right now. Now I should be able to figure out what it is. I got it! Part of the wallpaper in the storage room? In the music venue storage room, there should have been black wallpaper that's the same color as that scrap. There was also a tear along the edge of the wallpaper, wasn't there? If so... Oh, you're right. If you overlay the scrap that was caught on the lighting with the tear in the wallpaper... See? It fits perfectly. I see. So the scrap that was caught on the baton lighting was originally part of the wallpaper. And what's wrong with that? Does it have something to do with Hyoko's body disappearing? A mere nobody like me isn't important enough to answer that. But if you guys were exceptional enough to identify that scrap of paper, you can figure this out easily. A scrap of paper? The scrap of paper stuck to the bat baton lining was part of that wallpaper I found in the storage room. Is it connected to the sudden appearance of Hyoko's body? If I trace it back from there, the answer should become clear. Alright, let's give this a try. What? I don't know. Logic dive? Oh yeah, I forgot about this. You have to answer questions, right? brought there it, I think it was hidden um, maybe no I, oh my gosh it was probably brought there yeah oh. like it was suspended and I just didn't see it and then they used the baton lining to lower it I can't believe I got that dude I have no idea Why did they cure? What? The oh, they could use the curtain. 
Imagine I get that one wrong. I never got like the wrong answer thing before. Oh, you just died. Oh. Okay, it's the wallpaper for sure. What is the current inf use for then? Oh, okay, so if you get it wrong, you just fall and die. Gotcha. Makes sense. Nice. I was like, what What happens when you get it wrong? Now I know. Which, yeah, I guess it's obvious it's the wallpaper, but like, what is that curtain for? How did the killer hide her body with the wallpaper? Form a wall? How are they how do you form a wall with a wallpaper? <laughs> I know it says wallpaper. I'm not gonna fall, right? I'm good. They covered the pillar. It's all coming together! I don't really get it though. I got it! Kyoko's body was hidden before we found it. But it would have taken quite a long time to tape up a hidden body. No, the body was already taped up and the killer hid it, along with the pillar using the wallpaper. What? They hid the pillar? Yeah, by wrapping the wallpaper around the pillar, the killer was able to create a slightly larger pillar. So when I first discovered Ibuki's body, Kyoko's body was already there. Oh However, my gosh. Because it was concealed within a slightly larger pillar. I didn't realize that at the time. Oh my gosh. Well, that's understandable. I mean, it makes sense that you'd notice Ibuki's body right away. So they used the baton lighting on the ceiling to hang the wallpaper? The baton lighting forms a perfect circle around the pillar. So using it to hang the wallpaper totally fits. Then, the reason the wallpaper was covered in so many stickers was to make it look like that pillar. That's how they hid Hyoko's body. And wow. they peeled off the wallpaper as soon as I left the music thing. But the killer made a mistake. They accidentally ripped off a piece of the wallpaper. And because of that, a scrap was left on the baton lighting. The killer must have been in a hurry. Their plan took too long. Hajime could have walked in on them. But going to the trouble of hiding the body and the pillar is very bold and risky. But the crime itself would be much easier to pull off since they don't have much to do while Hajime's gone. They just have to peel off that wallpaper and stash it in the storage room. It's not that big of a deal. Then, when was Hyoko actually killed? Good point. And on that note, it's about time we shed some light on those imitation murders. Um, you mentioned imitation murder more than once. But what is that? Are you kidding me? You haven't seen my masterpiece? The Wizard of Monomy 2.5D? Wow. Hey, don't put my likeness in your movies without my permission. You're pretty noisy for someone who eats mothballs. I don't eat mothballs. I just enjoy looking at them. I knew it. There are so many similarities. It must have been intentional. Ibuki's death by hanging matches the Scarecrow's death from the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko getting taped up after her death matches the lion's death. It's as if both crimes were replicas of scenes from the movie, although the mutilated Tin Man was omitted. But why did the killer go to all this trouble in the first place? To trick us. Based on what we know, the reason the killer chose these imitations isn't that difficult to figure out. The reason the killer imitated the two victims in that movie, I should be able to explain that now. I'll hide the weapon because they like the movies to mix up the killing order. Yeah. I see! 
The reason the killer imitated two of the murders from the movie was so he'd mix up the killing order. Then... Kyoko was actually killed before Ibuki? A valid line of reasoning. Yeah, it's valid. The condition of Ibuki's body suggests that as well. What do you mean? <laughs> if you're going to cry and beg like that, then I guess I'll hear about the condition of Ibuki's body. I'm not even crying. I'll let you sob as much as you want later. Just hurry up and tell me before I change my mind. What in the world? Gundam? Oh, I see. You want me to explain it to you, right? Because you don't understand what I'm saying, right? An even bigger jerk? Impossible! Look, Ibuki died because she hanged herself, right? That means when she was still alive, her feet were touching the floor. Oh, right, yeah. Yep. What's wrong with that? The, the, okay, I see. But it seems Ibuki was still standing when Hyoko was killed. That would mean Hyoko was killed before Ibuki. <laughs> How light. Your words are so light, as light as the sylph's feather. <laughs> your opponent is out of your league. It is too absurd to try to perplex me so inadequately. Man, he's being annoying again. First and foremost, you claim Ibuki's feet were touching the floor when Hiyoko was killed. Yep. How can a low-class creature with no psychic abilities like you know something like that? Because she was doing something that's only possible if her feet were on the floor. It seems you suffer from a pathetic delusion. You're one to talk. Anyway, if this continues, we're just gonna talk in circles. I think it's best if we clarify Ibuki's status when Hyoko is killed. Blood on the souls, there it is. I'm, I'm on it right now. When Hyoko died, Ibuki's feet were on the floor. I agree. I am telling you to present your evidence. Did you see her walking? If her feet were on the floor, was there any sign she stepped on something? Yep. I agree with that. Just as Sonia said, Ibuki stepped on something. That something was blood. There were faint blood stains on the soles of her slippers. That is not Ibuki's blood, right? She suffered no external injuries. Facts. Then it's Hiyoko's blood! Hiyoko's only wound was a fatal slice on her neck. And she died almost instantly, right? If Ibuki stepped on her blood... It means Ibuki was still standing when Hiyoko was mortally wounded. Which means Ibuki was still alive at the exact moment Hiyoko was killed. Don't underestimate the power of the evil eye! Whoa. <laughs> Is that it? A shepherd dressed in his Sunday's finest still reeks of lamb, Hajime Hinata. Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Does that mean you have a rebuttal? Hmm. That's a good line. But, are you sure you're sure? If I show you how serious I am, this world might be destroyed, you know. You're so frightened, you can't even make a sound. It seems you've realized our difference in status. However, the time for conviction starts now. You better entertain me to the fullest. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, smudge on the floor, we can use that. You're saying the blood on Ibuki's feet belonged to Hiyoko? Mm -hmm. Ha! Impossible! Try to remember the crime scene. There was no- You can't step on blood that was never there. There's blood on the floor, this one. <laughs> Just about one minute. Did you see a nice nightmare? Try to remember the crime scene. There was no blood on the floor. Allow me to cut through those words. 
that's not it. The reason there was no blood on the floor is because the killer wiped it away afterward. Don't say such foolish things! You don't have proof of that at all! Yes, I do. If you look closely, there's a streak on the floor where blood was wiped away. When the killer tried to hide Yoko's body, they probably cleaned the blood at the same time, but... Ibuki must have already stepped in it, and the killer probably didn't even realize it. The reason they wiped off the blood on the floor was so we'd mix up the order of the murders, right? Even if they're able to hide Hyoko's body, it'd be bad if her blood was left out in the open. Plus, Ibuki's body was left out in the open, and it wasn't bleeding from any open wounds at all. Hyoko's body was probably wrapped in duct tape to stop her bleeding. Actually, the bleeding will stop once the heart stops beating, so I don't think they had to go that far. Aside from Mikon, none of us were aware of that fact, so the killer probably did not know it either. Maybe the heater was running inside the music venue so it would screw with Mikon's autopsy? That's right! I didn't know the time of death because of the heater! The time of death wasn't mentioned in the Monokuma file just to keep concrete evidence from us. Yep, since we have all this evidence, there's no one else who wants to object, right? Then it's decided. Hyoko was killed before Ibuki. It appears that it is wiser to retreat for now. Fine then, but regardless of good or evil, there's no deceit in upholding one's convictions. Can't you just shut up and back off? Now then, let us resume our debate. Ah, wait a sec. There's something I want to run by Monokuma first. Huh? Again? Didn't something like this happen last time, too? Hey, if the victim actually committed suicide, what are we supposed to do? Suicide? The same as always! You have to vote for who the killer is! Think about it! A suicide means you've killed the most important existence of all! Yourself! Unfortunately, that means there's no blacken to punish, but I guess in a pinch, I can always punish Monami. Why me? Um, Nagito, what do you mean, if the victim actually committed suicide? Well, I mean, I understand Hyoko's death, but I'm wondering if Ibuki was really murdered. For example, it's possible Ibuki killed Hyoko and then committed suicide due to a guilty conscience, right? That's totally impossible! Then she never would have killed her to begin with! She was afflicted by the despair disease, remember? That means anything can happen. But if Ibuki's the killer, she wouldn't have been able to falsify the sequence of the murders, right? Oh, after true. Hajime saw the hanged body, the sudden appearance of Hyoko's body soon after means the killer had to be alive at that time. Then she was alive. <gasps> the ladder was when Hajime broken, first though. discovered or, Ibuki, she was just pretending to be dead. I don't think so. If she waited until the Hajime was left, knocked down, right? that's when she could have made her move and mess with the crime scene. She, she hanged herself. Remember? There's no fucking way she could have faked that. And if she was going to fake her death, I think she wouldn't have chosen hanging. Her body would have been defenseless in that state. If anyone touched her, that alone would have ruined her plan. Hmm, I see. So that means... There's no doubt that someone killed those two. I'm glad. Now I'm free to search for the killer. What the heck? Ah, there's still one more issue on my mind. If Ibuki didn't commit suicide, just what was that video Hajime saw? According to that video you saw, Ibuki was by herself when she climbed the stepladder, right? Then does that mean someone forced her to do it? The forced? Perhaps 
they used hypnotism or something? I mean, she was... She had a gullible disease. That. Don't say it all proud. Uh, uh, um, putting that aside, it seems obvious that the killer did something. So, maybe we should figure out who was able to do whatever that was. So, an alibi. Then our plan is to destroy the weakest alibi. Since Hajime has seen the video, it is clear what time the crime took place. Uh, but just to be sure, that surveillance camera doesn't have a record function, right? It's a cheap-ass surveillance camera, you know? There's no way it has some kind of sweet recording feature. Then, the video Hajime saw was actually live? What if the curtain was to hide the other stepladder? And like other, like the, uh, like the other hospital gown and the other tote bag. What time did Hajime see that video? I saw it at the hospital, right before Monokuma's morning announcement. And I saw the body at the music venue a little after Monokuma's announcement. Hmm. So Ibuki hanged herself right before Monokuma's announcement. And since we established that Hyoko was killed before Ibuki, that means the time that the murders occurred was before and during the announcement. Then we just have to find the person who doesn't have an alibi during that time? Now then, I shall issue my decree. Let Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi commence. Oh, oh my gosh. We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room. I think everyone at the motel was doing that. So everyone who stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own cottage. That's not an alibi. Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi then... Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has failed! The murder supposedly happened before and during the morning announcement. The person who doesn't have an alibi for that time. Would the game let me like say like, oh, Mikan was with me, so I can shoot um, Sonya's weak point, or can do I have to agree with Fuyuhiko's right up until the morning announced? Oh yeah, right here. That's a good. Like it's good. Right up till until the morning announced, Monokuma announced that way. Mikan was with Hachi the whole time. Afterwards, she went to the hospital to check on everyone. I realized that Ibuki had disappeared when she was down. So she couldn't have committed the first like if nobody has no. Here we go. No, that's wrong. Hold on. Not all of us are missing an alibi. In fact, Mikan and I both have alibis. You you two have alibis? Up until I She saw was that sleeping day, with me. <laughs> Mikan and I were actually together for a while. Oh, hey yo! Hey, what kind of situation is that? <laughs> I accidentally fell asleep on top of Hajime. Okay, it's gotta stop. You gotta Too stop. Much info. <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. She just came to tell me Nagato's condition had improved. And we went to the hospital together afterward. So we were together until right before the announcement. I get it. You guys have alibis. If that's the case, the killer must be someone else. It's better if we think about it like that. The killer decided to falsify the murder sequence to hide the actual time of the crime anyway. So it's inevitable that an alibi for both before and during the morning announcement would be very important. Hmm. 
It feels like Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has backed us into a corner instead. But committing an imitation murder, is that really all it was? Faking the time the crime occurred by falsifying the murder sequence, hiding their alibi in the process? Was that the only reason the killer made both bodies imitate the movie? Are you saying there was another reason? I don't know. I feel really bad for confusing you guys so much, but that's how I feel. I think the killer had a completely different reason for falsifying the murder sequence. The killer had a different reason? If that's the case, are we all in the killer's trap? Inside a trap set by one of us. If so, then who's in it? What kind of trap is it? Uh, that's that's shorter than I thought. The <laughs> moss balls look sure look tasty today. Stop it! Don't characterize me as someone who lives off moss balls. Here's some chance time. What what's that? Now then, Monomy's appeal time starts now. Appeal time. Your kind hearted hearted uh, big brother is gonna give you the chance to reclaim your honor. Good luck. Show those jerks who treat you like a red-headed stepchild who's boss. That's 99% your fault. While you were whining, your time's already running out, so please make your appeal simple. About three or thirty thousand words or something. That's too long. It'll be a boring. It'll just be an boring appeal. Come on, if your appeal is successful, there might be merchandise opportunities heading your way. And then. I'm Usami, Magical Miracle Girl. Usami, I'm an itty bitty girl who's sweet like a girl. Jeez, and I thought a certain robot's little sister was supposed to be the best. What a disappointment! Um. Who are you talking about? I have no clue whatsoever. I'm Monami. Once again, I've been put in such an unreasonable situation. Seriously. He's like the king of unreasonableness. Why did it turn out like this? We were supposed to have a fun, friendly school trip, but it turned out all bloody instead. No! This definitely cannot be allowed. That's why I want you to remember this. Everyone, do your very best. Don't lose to yourself. And don't forget to save frequently. I'm gonna take a little break. I'll see you on the next one.